So Hearthstone mercenaries had a bunch of buffs to a lot of mercenaries that were just not doing too hot. And a lot of these buffs look like they're going to be pretty impactful. But I bet a question you might have is which mercenaries should I level? Which ones are going to be good? And should I even put the time investment into them? And that's what this video is going to help you with. I'm going to go through whether or not I think these mercenaries will see play in about a week or people are just going to be trying Mimi things and seeing if they're good or not. Hopefully this will help you. And if it does, I would really appreciate a subscription if you're not already subscribed for Hearthstone Mercenaries content and a like. And as always, you look fantastic. I'm a doctor. First up is Cornelius Rome and Cornelius got two buffs in this patch. First things first was hold the front no longer has a cooldown. And also the speed was decreased by two going from four to two speed. On top of that, Cornelius's blessing of sacrifices speed was decreased by one going from three to two now Cornelius is probably one of the more easier questions to answer here is this character going to be good in about a week I actually think so I think giving him a turn two taunt or speed two taunt on turn one with no cooldown drastically made him a much better character and because he has shield of dawn already which is the passive that makes him just take three less damage from everywhere is going to be great for a protector taunt if you're looking for one Blessing of Sacrifice is also just great because it's two speed rather than three, which means that will let you beat some more abilities, which can protect a mercenary on your side. I would highly recommend you level up Cornelius as I see him going to see a lot more play with these buffs towards this kid. So the list is Cariel Rome. Cariel basically got a very small nudge, which is just six health. She used to have 67, then she went up to 73, I believe. And now she's at 78 for me because she's just maxed. Should you level her up? You probably already have her leveled up. And this extra health is probably not going to dramatically change Cariel's position in the current metagame. So I don't think she's mandatory to level up. But if you want to go for it, I don't know. I don't think she's going to be that great. I think the five life that she got was or six life that she got was like, eh, not as good as Cornelius. I think Cornelius is a much better character. Next on the list, we have Grom, and I'm really happy Grom got buffed because he is one of the more reputable characters when it comes to WoW lore, and he was just kind of like a bot, so I'm really glad his kit got introduced into kind of a new way of playing him. Now, with the buffs, Staggering Slam goes from 4 speed to 2, which is fantastic. It gets under a lot of abilities, which makes him so much better. You can make Malfurion slower. You can make Anduin slower. Just a really good ability overall. Battle Fury went from 9 speed to 6 speed, so a 3 speed increase, which is fantastic. Overall, I think that Grom is going to be played as a starting mercenary for a protector. Maybe not the best mercenary at all, but definitely will be tried out quite a bit and probably see a little bit more of a niche play because the fact that you can get under characters with Staggering Slam now with a 6 speed slow, that's really strong. I expect Grom to see somewhat of play and hopefully Grom will actually stick around in order for him to be a better mercenary but I think it really depends on the metagame for Grom. Next on the list we have Jaraxxus and Jaraxxus got two really good buffs here. First and foremost his Fist of Jaraxxus now does at max rank 15 damage compared to the 12 it used to but on top of that the speed went from 6 to 4 and that is insanely powerful. It still has a cooldown which is unfortunate but I think this makes Grom a much better character as now his other buff, Fell Infernal, has gone from one cooldown in speed five to speed four and no cooldown. So you no longer just have to do a Legion Burst on turn one. You could do the Fell Infernal and set up for a Fist of Jaraxxus the following turn with a Demon Comp. Now, with the Demons coming for a little bit stronger, there may be a new opening for a Demon Comp in this metagame. That's really exciting. Now, will this be good? I think the problem they're still going to have is I don't think they're going to be good enough against the shadow comp. If you're going against maybe nature, I think you have more of a real chance of let, letting this work. But again, shadow, it's not looking too hot there for the demons. So I'm a little skeptical on demons. I wouldn't put them on their high priority. But again, I will do a tier list probably soon to let you know if they're good or not. Next on the list is Varian Rin. Varian's only buff, which is kind of meh, is retaliation. It goes from a one cooldown to a zero cooldown. And rather than just attacking a mercenary after it attacks this turn, you get plus five attack, which is rather nice. Now, does this fix Varian's problem? Uh, not really. I wish almost they made him have taunt. And I think that would have been a lot better than just gain plus five attack. But the fact that this is so fast may be actually really good against Samaro. 
now the problem is is like tomorrow still gonna get a lot of attack so maybe not good enough because again against a shadow opener or a frost opener you're kind of just taking a lot of damage for variants so i don't think he's actually kind of worth the the time investment now if you already have him buffed and maxed try him out i'm sure he might be slightly better but i'm not too optimistic on this change Illidan got a lot of changes so let's go first with his stats he went from nine attack and 69 health to 12 attack and 74 health blade dance went from two cooldown to one cooldown and his demon shroud went from at max rank taking five less damage while attacking all the way up to 10 so virtually doubling the amount of reduction that he got from attacking which is very good now Illidan was kind of suffering from the fact that he was just not as good as Samaro basically now he actually has a lot more agency to be great because you can go winged assault on turn one and because he's a fighter it's a very low chance that Illidan dies turn one and then you follow that up with a blade dance hopefully to do a bunch of damage to a lot of character well obviously you know three random enemies but hopefully a bunch of mercenaries now will Illidan be good in a week I'm really skeptical to say yes but I think if people can find a comp he goes in I think Illidan has potential to be very good and I know that's a very like vague answer but it really depends on would you rather use Illidan or Samaro and I think that's the hardest question to answer so I'm sorry but I don't think he's actually worth leveling unless you really want to play with Illidan Unis got a pretty good buff in order to defend against Blade Master Samaro as we were just speaking about him first things first is the scaly taunt which at max rank did three less damage now it does five less damage which is pretty great five less damage just flat against all abilities that turn that's a really good buff to have and then his necklace which is arguably his best thing to go with the taunt now it takes three less damage which was already the case but can no longer take critical damage that turn which is really good one of the issues i had with mutinous was if you're going against like malfurion you kind of get wrecked now he's just a really good turn one taunt and i think that's rather insane so you should definitely level murlocs and i just want to say this even though it's not going to be a part of this video i will have a mutinous build or a murloc build later out today that it does not actually use the buffs here and i think it's going to be a really good indication for a lot of you of how strong the murlocs will actually be now so make sure you check out that video speaking of murlocs we also have a buff for old merc Eye, and his buffs are kind of indirect but the main idea here is that your buff on Felfin Navigator goes from 3-5 to 5-5, five five, which is just better, more attack for your Murlocs. Giant Fin went up from a 16-16 to a 20-20, and his Primordial Fin equipment gives Giant Fin plus 8 attack and Divine Shield. So virtually if you're running this, you get a 28-20 Murloc that has Rush and a Divine Shield for the first hit. Now, I actually already think old Murkai is pretty good for Murlocs. This just makes Murlocs better. And I already talked about in the, the mutinous section how good Murlocs are going to be. So you should be pretty excited for Murlocs because they're going to be rather, you know, a pretty good opener to play against some shadow comps. Another demon is getting buffed with Lord Jaraxxus, and that is Rathirion. Now, I obviously haven't leveled them, but the buff that they're getting is just a buff on his max attack uh, when he's max rank at 30. He's going from 9 attack to 11 attack, and Hulking Overfiend now does the following. Attack the lowest health enemy, death blow, attack the lowest health enemy. So this technically you could go infinite here, where before all it did was just attack the lowest health enemy. Now, is this actually good enough? I'm not 100% sure I would want to play this, because I would rather think Jaraxxus with another demon would be better than just playing Rathirion. I still think Rathirion is not that great, so I'm not optimistic on it. I don't think it's worth leveling at all. Next on the list is Rikara, and Rikara got a pretty small buff here with Orc Onslaught going from seven speed to five. Orcs were already pretty good, and considering that Gul'dan also gets a buff in this patch, means they'll be slightly better. I actually think that Orcs are pretty great now, and I just posted Paul, who was the lead game designer's Orc build on the channel. So if you want to try out Orcs, definitely go try that out but i think a lot of people probably have rakara already leveled so take the time if you want to play orcs because she fits right in abs cutter butter got a very small buff in the case of his stats he used to be at eight attack and 69 health now he's at 10 attack and 72 health but obviously i have him maxed is this gonna probably make scabs a better character yeah are you gonna play scabs over another fighter yeah i don't think so i mean he has a cool kid i mean 
I don't think Scab's going to see play. Um, maybe we'll try something at some point when more gnomes are in the mercenary uh, pool. But at the moment, I don't think Scabs is really worth playing in any build. Brian got a small buff in his attack, and I don't really want to understate how good this buff actually is because he's going from 9 attack to 12 attack, but you don't really care about his life because you actually kind of want Tyrion to die due to the Ashbringer giving plus 8 plus 8 to all your mercs. So this is a really good buff. This makes Tyrion much more threatening. You also have a case to just deny Blademaster Samaro the following turn. I think overall... Tyrion will be a lot better than people actually give him credit for. And I do think he will be one of the reasons why you can play a lot more fun builds. Maybe Tyrion's the reason why Scabs gets better or Illidan gets better. I personally think that's my bold call. Tyrion is worth the leveling and the upgrades. But again, if you want to wait a week for a tier list, then you can wait. But I think I'm pretty optimistic on Tyrion. Last but not least, Ghoul Daniel is getting a small little buff here with Siphon Soul going from 7 speed to 6 speed. Pretty easy to explain. He's just slightly better. Uh, if you thought Gul'dan would be cool in an Orc Comp, which he's very good in an Orc Comp, play the Orc Comp. If you don't think the Orc Comp is good, which I think you should probably try it out because it's a lot better than people give it credit for, especially against like Shadow. You can just run through Shadow. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, so if you like Gul'daniel, then this is perfect for you. I would highly recommend leveling. Well, if this was helpful, get ready for a tier list coming out at some point in the next week with these updates as we see what characters are good and what characters aren't good. Thank you so much for watching. You look fantastic.